get on back with the deadly six questions. Okay, so I have to find answers for all of these. And I heard that Dobson's coming today, tonight. Yeah, so I have to like finish all this, rush home soon. Else you know what she starts to write. All the yummy things my mama starts to make. She finishes up all of them without leaving for me also sometimes. So I have to rush home soon. Or else how am I going to eat tummy food? Hmm? Okay. So, moving on to question number one. The first question. In which of the following organs of the human body does the maximum absorption of food take place? In which of the following organs of the human body does maximum absorption of food take place? Option number one, gullet. Option number two, intestine. Option number three, sorry, option number two, last in, large intestine. Option number three, small intestine. Option number four, stomach. Yeah, the most, like when you eat something, as I can remember, it goes to the gullet and then to the stomach and then to the small intestine and then to the large intestine, I guess. I don't know, I'm not sure, you know, not very sure, but I think so. So, in which of the following organs of the human body does the maximum absorption of food takes place? I guess it's the small intestine. Want to check whether it's correct? So, here we go. The answer is small intestine. Okay. The small intestine or the small boil is an organ in the Gastrointestinal, uh, gastrointestinal tract where most of the end absorption of nutrients and minerals from food takes place. It lies between the stomach and the large intestine like I told you before and receives bile and pancreatic juice through the pancreatic duct to aid in digestion. Yeah, the small intestine has three distinct regions, the duodenum, jejunum and the ileum. Yeah, the duodenum is the shortest where the preparation for absorption through the small finger-like prostrations called villi begins. The jejunum is specialized for the absorption through its lining by the enterocytes, small nutrient particles which have been previously digested by enzymes in the duodenum. The main function of ileum is to absorb vitamin B, vitamin B. Remember, it's not vitamin, it's vitamin. Vitamin B binds salts and whatever products the digestion were not absorbed by the jejunum. Okay, so. That's it about the small intestine. So here we jump out to question number two. Two v two. So question number two is hydrometer is used to measure. Hydrometer is used to measure. Option number one, relative humidity. Option number two, purity of milk. Option number three, specific gravity of liquid. Option number four, none of the above. Relative humidity, purity of milk, specific gravity of a liquid, none of the above. Hygrometer. Hygrometer. Okay. We'll say it's Relative humidity? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so let's have a check. The answer is relative humidity. Okay, so uh, it was relative humidity. Yeah, a hygrometer is an instrument 
used to measure the amount of humidity and water vapor in the atmosphere, in soil or in confined spaces. Humidity measurement instruments usually rely on measurements of some other quantity such as temperature, pressure, mass, a mechanical or electrical change in a substance as moisture is absorbed. Yeah, so by calibration and calculation, these measured quantities can lead to a measurement of humidity. Modern electronic devices use temperature of condensation or changes in electrical capacitance or resistance to measure humidity differences. The first screwed hydro, uh, hygrometer was invented by the Italian Renaissance polymath Leonardo da Vinci in 1480 and a more modern version was created by Swiss polymath Johann Lambert in 1755. Later in the year 1783, Swiss uh, physicist and geologist Horace Benedict invented the first hygrometer using the human hair to measure humidity. So that is about hygrometer and relative humidity which makes us move to question number 3. Yeah, so now the only fish that makes the nest is the, the only fish that makes the nest is the stickleback, humpback whale, dolphin. Stickleback, humpback whale, dolphin. Now may I don't know these things about the fish. Fish, 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 fish. No, no idea. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So uh, let's now go have a check on what the answer is. The answer is stickleback. Okay, so it was stickleback. Yeah, so sticklebackers are mostly found in the ocean, but some can be found in fresh water. The freshwater taxa were trapped in Europe, Asia and North America after the Ice Age and have evolved different features from the marine species. Sticklebacks are carnivores feeding on small animals such as insects and fish larvae. Sticklebacks are characterized by the presence of strong and clearly isolated spines in their dorsal fins. An unusual feature of sticklebacks is that they have no scale. Even though they are fish, they have no scales on their skin, although some species have bony armor plates. Yeah, the maximum size of the best known species is the three spine stickleback is about four inches, but a few of them are more than three inches long. Uh, they mature sexually at the age, at the length, about two inches. Most of the other sticklebacks uh, species are roughly similar in size or somewhat smaller. So. Uh, these sticklebacks are species that show similar things, but unusual mating behavior. Yeah. So, uh, the males develop a rare uh, breast and construct a nest from weeds held together by secretion from their kidneys. Then, attract females to the next nest. Sorry. Uh, a female lays her eggs in the nest where the male fertilizes them. Male guards the egg one, until they hatch and may continue to guard after the, after the fry after they hatch. Some males did follow spawning. Yeah, 
So that's about the sticklebacks. And I'm so tired. I'm thirsty now. I'll just back. I'll just be back in a cafe after going home. Okay. So now time to move on to question number four. Right? So question number four is the specific saffron is sorry the spice saffron is derived from which flower the spice saffron is derived from which flower rose peach crocus rose peach crocus i don't know properly not from rose maybe Peach? I don't know. The answer is crocus. Okay, so saffron is a spice derived from the flower crocus. Yes, commonly uh, known as saffron crocus. You know, the vivid crimson stigmata and the styles called threads are collected and dried to be used mainly as the seasoning and coloring agent in food. Saffron has long been the world's most costly spice by uh, weight. Although some doubts remain on its origin, it is believed that saffron originated in Iran. However, uh, Greece, Mesopotamia, have also been suggested as the possible region of origin of this plant. Uh, Sativus of uh, Eurasia, uh, possibly a triploid form of Croctus. Saffron Crocus slowly propagated throughout much of Eurasia and was later brought to the path of North Africa, North America and Oceania. Yeah, so saffron's taste and ideal form or gray uh, hair like fragrance result from the chemicals uh, and saffron. Uh, it also contains a pigment, uh, a carotenoid pigment, crocking, you know, uh, which imparts a rich golden yellow due to dishes and textiles. It also recalled history is attested in 7th century BC. So Iran now accounts for approximately 90% of the world's production of saffron. Yeah, so that was about saffron. And here comes question number five jumping. Okay, so a rock hopper is what type of a bird? A rock hopper is what, uh, is what type of a bird? A, uh, a pigeon, a penguin or a parrot? A rock hopper. I totally think that it has to be a penguin. Yeah, most probably. Suspicious? Here we go to check. The answer is penguin. Okay, so that was uh, a penguin type, right? A rock hopper is a penguin type of a bird. The rock hopper penguins are three closely related taxa of crested penguins that have been traditionally treated as a single species and are sometimes spilled into three species. Not all experts agree on the classification of these penguins. Some consider all three as distinct species. Some split the western and eastern forms into the southern rock hopper penguin and keep the northern rock hopper as distinct, 
while other experts consider all three potential varieties to be one species. Yes. So, that is about the rock hopper. You know, it's worth seeing this rock hopper. I really don't know much about them, but do search and see what this rock hopper is. Yeah. So, what is a group of bats called? And that is question number six. What is a group of bats called? Fledge, cloud, or chain? Fledge, fledge, cloud, or chain? I mean, a chain of bats. A fledge of bats. A cloud of bats? Sounds nice. Here we go to check whether my answer is okay. The answer is cloud. So, a group of bats are called a cloud. Yeah, a cloud of bats, likewise. These bats, you know, they are flying mammals. While others can glide, bats are the only mammals capable of flight. Other mammals glide, of course, and these mammals flight. There are over thousand different bat species. Bats are natural. That means they are active at night. Just like me, when teachers give me a lot of homework, a lot of assignments, a lot of question papers, a lot of revision papers to do, what I do is stay awake all night doing them. So I'm sleepy also sometimes, but yet I have to do all of them. Right? I have to complete all of them. Yes, yeah, so I'm active at night. I come here in the evening to discuss all the questions and answers, and then I go home. Then it's night when I start to work, then I'm active at night, so I'm also natural. So are the bats. Yeah. So this bats see in the dark using a special skill called echolocation. Bats make noises and wait for the sound waves to bounce back. If it doesn't bounce back, they can slowly fly forward. They can tell the distance of various objects by how quickly they hear the wa sound waves. Yeah. Most bats feed on insects while others eat fruits and some feed on blood like the vampire bats they feed on solely on blood right so vampire bats can carry rabies making their bites potentially dangerous yeah some bats live by themselves while others live in caves with thousands of other bats living in unity example for us also Bats can live for over 20 years. Petropus bats are the largest bats in the world. B A T S bats, which are the animals, and that is the end of all bats and my six questions, of course. So, I come here every day with six questions, and then you help me to find the answers, right? And then I leave. Today I have to leave quickly because Dobson will be coming and might start to steal all my food. My food. I'm so hungry now. Yummy food I made in the kitchen by mommy. So I have to rush home, right? Okay. So if you have questions, what should you do? You have to send them to me, to my house. The home address you see right over there. Or else you can send a message to WhatsApp or Viber to my mummy's number, which is right over there. Note 76821 right? And the other thing which you have to do is if you want to see me, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by the name A Plus TV and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is A Plus TV, right? That is all you've got to do. Do you? Well, and until I'll be back with the next six questions, stay tuned, keep watching, bye!